from Instituto de Agricultura Sostenible, and she'll be talking about cropping systems, crop rotations, and intercropping. Okay, good morning. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, as uh, he said, I am uh, at the Institute of Sustainable Agriculture, and I uh, will talk about, uh, give a quick overview of cropping systems, crop rotation, and intercropping. And uh, first, it's to define what under we understand for cropping system, no? and that we refer to crops, their sequence, and the management practices in a given field. So your, the plot size can vary very much, but uh, we are talking of a, of a sequence and management and crop for for a specific plot. So we we go from we'll start with cropping systems and then we will uh, talk about the farming systems where we increase our area. Sorry. Um, first. We, the first and simple definition is when we have a monoculture. So we have the same crop every cropping season, same crop one year after the other one, and typically in maize belt in USA or lowland rice in Asia. And uh, we can also talk about uh, mixed cropping or multiple cropping where we have uh, maybe more crops uh, than one per year or there is an overlap or we can talk about rotations when there is a sequence of crops uh, in time or intact crops where they share some space. Now this, this is a, a bit more uh, details on the when the uh, regarding the intercropping. So we have we, we can talk of synchrony when we have more than one crop uh, occupying the same location at the same time. Or we can consider asynchrony. So there is a certain sequence. One crop, as we said before, one crop, one season, another crop, the, the following season. But we can also say relay cropping. And that means that before we, we harvest one crop, the second crop is established already. We can also talk about cover crops. These are crops that probably are not harvest. They are there because they have a, a service. They, 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 have, they are there to maybe protect the soil. And uh, that's, they occupy the time between the major crops. And we can also talk about uh, other areas in the land that uh, we can occupy with a crop, but it's not part of the uh, major crops, but they are occupying maybe the, the field margin and again they are there to provide a service. Maybe because uh, the, and usually the, the, we talk in, in organic uh, farming, no? they are there because maybe they are host of different uh, uh, insects or uh, because they provide uh, some uh, benefit or another. We will see that before, uh, later. So now let's see what is a crop rotation. No? We grow different crops in the same area in sequence. Uh, here, usually when uh, uh, you have a rotation, we talk about of different, uh, different species. Uh, but there is also the possibility when you have uh, land big enough to have uh, Divide your land according to the reasons you consider uh, in each plot, you have a different rotation. And we will see how now, what are the criteria uh, for the choosing the, the rotations uh, before we we'll go through the advantages. In general, we consider the rotations for using the resources better typically water or nutrients, uh, because uh, we might introduce a crop that uh, improve your soil fertility, for example, typically legumes, or it helps to better control of pests, diseases, and weeds. It also helps to, to diversify the risk in the farm or in the production. And 
uh, of course, help to, to better distribute the, the means of production, uh, the, typically to consider the labor of the equipment you have in the farm. No? So it depends on the uh, people working uh, in, the, in the farm, or even if you can rent it, you, you can, uh, your own means, you can distribute it better according to the rotation. So now the, uh, we go now through different criterion for uh, designing the rotation. You, you can imagine the first one for a farmer, uh, it's uh, to consider the yields, the prices, and in, being in Europe, of course, the subsidies. No? Uh, after all, the, the, the product had to, to give the, the farmer uh, means to live uh, well and, and with dignity. No? So, uh, typically, is the first. This will be the first consideration. But uh, another uh, uh, cons important consideration is what is the the, the window, the, the season length, and the, and the environment requirements uh, that will um, give you the the, the uh, what is the, the window for you to grow. That's typically for rain-fed crops because it depends very much on water availability. And uh, in this table, for example. We have on the left when will be the break of the rainy season for different years, and so you need rain to uh, to do the soil preparation, and then you need some rain and uh, to do the sowing and rain during the season to grow the the crop. And on the uh, on the orange part, and this is uh, considered for uh, for the cereal, you have the uh, late the, the last frost of the season of the winter. Why is this important? Because that gives you the day, uh, the last day uh, that flowering can start. Because flowering in uh, an anthesis for a cereal is very sensitive to frost. So you cannot risk your production by flowering in the middle of winter and then not having anything. So you have to consider what is your uh, crop, what is your window, and then fit what is uh, best for it. Uh, typically, for temperate areas where we are, for we consider autumn winter sowing, like winter cereals, wheat, barley, triticale, or grain legumes like fava bean, uh, oil seeds like uh, rapeseed or canola. No? Then there is the spring planting. Crops that require, uh, let's say, don't like much the, the low temperature. So we have to sow when uh, temperatures start to increase, like maize, sorghum, rice, or oil seeds like sunflower. But there are, there are species that uh, can go to both, to, to autumn, winter, or spring, like uh, wheat. No? They, there is such a, a large variety of uh, of cycles for wheat that uh, you can practically sow wheat uh, all the year round, no? provided you have water. And um, the the another thing uh, thing to consider it's the the ecological characteristic and management of different uh, crops. Uh, for example, a very common in the in the uh, when you design the rotation is the control of wheat by having different species uh, wheat control is much easier but using different herbicides you know? and uh, you also uh, you can consider um, crops that have different type of rooting uh, to have a crop with a shallow rooting and then followed by, a, by, a, by another crop with deeper rooting that can extract and deep, uh, the deep nitrogen and water that it, uh, it's not available for the previous crop. That way you use uh, these resources that otherwise uh, will not be used or even lost. No? Then the, there is also like the case of uh, brassicas or other crops that have um, value in the control of, uh, for example, soy diseases. The, the brassical is a typical example from Australia. When they move to, to not tillage, the, that means that the uh, soil is not uh, tillage or there is no labor uh, to move the soil. There was a proliferation of uh, soil diseases. By including brassica 
in the rotation with wheat, uh, it uh, really was a big difference and made a solution for, for the system by controlling uh, with the glucosinolate that the roots ex exudate to control the take all. Uh, another criterion, uh, the use and conservation of resources. Now, this, uh, um, for example, uh, like the cover crops, we also talk about catch crops, for example, catch crop uh, in the sense of uh, crops that you put in between to, to in this case, to, to reach the nitrogen that is deep, to avoid that they are leached when the rains come and, and go into onto the water table and uh, uh, create an environmental problem. Um, we uh, can consider also of the cover crops I mentioned before, when the, you have uh, insistent system where there is a problem with the soil erosion because the soil is naked when rains come, by having a crop uh, that protects the, the soil in these uh, risky periods, uh, that helps to maintain it and improve it. And, and that pro gives you a benefit for the following crop and for the soil and the system. We mentioned also, for example, the, the legumes to improve the, the natural supply. But that was, of course, you, you, you have to really evaluate in your conditions, in your system, how much of that nitrogen is uh, being provided. Um, and in, in general, uh, the tendency is to, to avoid to have a fallow period. I mean, having the soil naked. Uh, of course, unless it's uh, an arid environment that you need uh, to, to capture some water in the, in the profile. Because if you have some green there, you're using the water. No? In this case, uh, uh, some fallow is uh, recommended. Now, now I'm going to, to talk uh, in a few slides about the intercrops, where, as we saw, no, we have two or more crops grown at the same time, sharing the space. Yeah, and this is usually done for, for use the resources more efficiently. And the way uh, the crops are established, it can be a random. You mix seeds uh, of the different species and, and, and do the sowing. Or, or you can do it in rows, have one row of one crop, another of uh, the other crop, or in bands. Uh, or do uh, relay intercropping. That, as I said, you sow the crop before the, may, the, the, the previous crop ha is harvested. And we will see now some of the examples. This uh, intercrop, uh, typical, it's for, for the crops. That's the more common in our conditions uh, for intercropping. Uh, and veg and oats, typical for the Mediterranean. Uh, the, the veg, the legume, the oats, the cereal, it gives um, a better and good quality of uh, for the crops. Uh, and in fact, there are companies uh, that produce different uh, combination of the species, depending on the use you're going to, 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 to have of these uh, crops. If they're going to be direct grazing in winter and cut or uh, for hay or silage, or uh, if, they, yeah, if you're going to have the animals in or out, or when do you go, are you going to cut it? The, the interesting thing is that the, the, the mixtures are already available and will depend on what you want and in your conditions, the, the most appropriate ones. Now, the relay cropping is something that is uh, it's taking and it's um, expanding in areas, particularly where uh, not tillage uh, it's, uh, has developed. And uh, it's, not, it's not easy because you have some you know, you have to harvest when you have the other crop and you don't need to damage. So you have to planify uh, very well how to do it. This uh, is an example we can see. Um, I think the, the right photo is from Mexico, the left from from US. Um, the, it's a soybean and relay sown on, on the wheat before the harvest. You see on the left, the, the wheat still not harvest, but you can see already the, the seedlings uh, out. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, with the no-till, it, it's a good complement, but of course it's uh, 
the management has uh, its difficulties. This case uh, from the tropics, it's a coconut and banana, and it's uh, there because it produce the light more uh, efficiently. You have the, the coconut palms that uh, uh, are permanent, and uh, then the, the bananas in the bottom that uh, get uh, most of the light arriving there. And in some occasions, like in the border, you can grow uh, annual crops uh, to, to get a, a different uh, complement to, to your production system. So this is the typical in the um, tropics with rainfall. And the, the, the intercropping, it's, uh, okay, besides the, the, the pastures I mentioned, uh, it's now uh, there is quite a lot of work on it, more on the organic farming. Not trying as they they have uh, they cannot use input external inputs. They try to to see how they they can use the resources more efficiently. And the the in general the advantages uh, we see is the uh, the risks are diversified for in terms of pests or bio, biotic events or uh, place fluctuation. Imagine no, if you have uh, different crops and one, and one uh, the price goes down and, and you don't get nothing for it, at least you will have other crops to, to sell and have some return for it. Uh, we mentioned the, the efficient use of resources, light, water and nutrients, typically. Uh, we mentioned now how to use uh, with different fruiting crops, you can use water and nutrients from deep layers. And also, uh, to it's using, at least in organic, to, to increase the number of predators that, that might reduce the pest uh, incidence. Problems, well, the, as I said, no, the, the, it's not easy to, to, to manage. Uh, the other thing is that if you have a continuous presence of crops in the field and they are all, for example, uh, host um, of uh, pests that are a problem, then it's con the control of this pest might be very difficult. No? Uh, but above all, it's, it's, the, it's the management of the system that makes it uh, hard. No? Uh, often it's... Uh, increase the cost of the production and the harvest is uh, very complicated unless you have the proper machines and uh, it's uh, very well ma organized it's not that that easy of course if you have a small plot and you can do things by hand then it's uh, easier no but in, but in europe the the what is we can see common like the pasture we mentioned the um, the veggie gardens uh, usually for organic or uh, we, we, we also see in the landscape uh, some fruit orchards that they have alley cropping with the uh, annual crops in between. Uh, it's quite rare in annual crops based uh, system. And it's seen as an opportunity in organic uh, production. And as I said, there's quite a bit of research in, in this sense. Now to, to the first uh, approximation to see if it uh, how effective is the intercropping is to use the land equivalent ratio uh, where you consider the the yield obtained by the crop if it is intercrop or if it is in pure stand uh, uh, I mean alone no only the the crop so if if the ratio is about one the 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 intercrop is better now the example uh, we have here for maize and beans it's uh, for the tropics and um, let's let's say of a low low productivity or potential system, and that's why the, the yields are a bit low. But it's uh, often in this subsistence uh, system where we, we can see uh, intercrop. In this case, they they get uh, 800 kilo of maize. Uh, and 600 kilos uh, per hectare of beans when they are intercrop, and uh, 1,200 or 800 uh, when they are in monoculture. If we do the, the we calculate the line equivalent ratio uh, with these figures, we see that it's one 
0.42. That means that it's uh, uh, more efficient in this case. Uh, but of course, it depends. Uh, it, it also depends on the relative importance of each species and the and the competition between. So there are um, there are some research that uh, what they do is study the different um, proportion of the species and see when it's more effective. And the, the one I mentioned to you that is quite common, the batch oat, uh, will be more than one when oats are less than 20%, uh, because it's more competitive. And also, the, 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 the quality of the mixture uh, is not that good. So it's, it's something you have to consider also. Uh, the, we, we also have uh, uh, an intercrop in system. Uh, agroforestry system that it's uh, common in Spain and Portugal Mi uh, when we have crops and trees and much more uh, we have the uh, the soil protection by trees uh, shade these trees also provide shading for animals it can it might improve uh, the nutrient balance for example if, if we have uh, in, in, the, in the system legume shrubs like acacia and lucena that uh, uh, can provide some nitrogen, and they are also common in Africa. Uh, and they can also provide additional commodities uh, like seeds or fiber. Uh, as I say, it's we have local examples that is uh, very common. That is the the ESA, no? and uh, here, as I say, we have much more than just trees and crops. No, we have other byproducts. See on the right that it's um, alcornoques, and and therefore we have uh, the cork production. Uh, the the icons are eaten by the uh, uh, pigs and the Iberian type, and then we get the the, the pata negra, which is uh, again the good quality product. Uh, you, I would like you to to, to after the the. The class, no, and later seeing what what are the days are really provided, no, with type of product, which which are the environmental benefits that this system uh, is providing to to um, not only to the farmer, I would say to to everybody, no, and um, yeah, it's a uh, yeah, give it give it a thought as a, as an exercise to. To, to see in terms of resources, in terms of uh, uh, products, and uh, it, it's just it's a nice example. When, when, when will be best uh, to be promoted, or where the, the, the potential is higher or not? Why is if it's so nice, why is it not so extended? Just give some thoughts up to it. Uh, okay, this slide is just maybe a summary of what we have uh, discussed before in terms of uh, resources and management. So we'll skip it, and so we move into the farming systems. You know? So we we're talking about the, the the cropping system, the rotation, the intercropping, and now we we go uh, go a step forward. Now, uh, we farming system is defined. Very different, independent uh, on the institutions or where you work. But in general, we can consider that it's a population of farm systems that have similar resource bases, uh, similar household livelihoods and constraints. Additionally, to the agronomic and ecological components that we have seen before. No? So that means we, we consider um, also here socioeconomic uh, aspects. The first uh, simple division is to talk about commercial farming and subsistence farming. Commercial farming, when you sell the products to, to, to earn money, and subsistence, when you eat or you consume whatever you, you produce. Uh, the, um, in, in, a, in a farming system, you have, uh, you consider the inputs that you want to use, inputs coming from outside, no? temperature, rain, soil, slope, radiation, you have then the labor or machinery, energy, fertilizer, pesticides, and you, the, 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 the farming system turns these inputs into outputs, 
And for this, you need some activities to grow the crops and to raise the animals. You have to do the sowing, the weeding, the irrigation, the harvesting, etc. And with that, you produce output. Uh, grains, fruit, straw, milk, livestock. And there, there will be some part of, of the, of, um, of the biomass that is produced that is uh, not really uh, an output because you are lo you lost them or because you leave them in the in the ground, no? So you don't uh, eat it or you don't sell it. If you if you sell it, you are in the commercial. If you eat it or use it, then you are in the subsistence, no? Now, the the to understand uh, the different farming system, it's particularly important for the uh, main institutions to define the objectives and the policies, particularly when you want to uh, promote or benefit or develop something, you have to have a clear uh, uh, definition of the farming systems so you can be much more effective. No? And that it's the, not only uh, for Andalusia, let's say, but also a national level or the European level or uh, FAO, no, for developing. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, an essential. Now, now let's uh, just go quickly through major cropping systems, just for you to to, to have a bit of uh, idea behind. Uh, we he have uh, the rain-fed maize soybean in America that occupies more than 85 million hectares, or rain-fed wheat-based systems in Europe, that's more than 40 million. The irrigated lowland rice systems, more than 24 million hectares, or irrigated rice wheat uh, in the Indo-Gangetic Plains with uh, now more than 17 million hectares. And um, I just want to go through the, some of the specific examples for you to, to see better um, what, uh, what the system is. No? This, the very close to us, is the rain-fed wheat uh, based system in the Guadalquivir Valley uh, that is characterized by erratic and low rainfall, frost at flowering, as I mentioned before, and high temperature during the grain filling. So we have here in the figure the um, rainfall and the evapotranspiration per month. You see the time, the, the period that is occupied by wheat, you know, sown in, in, in autumn and harvest in uh, June. Uh, and then that's followed by the, that's during one season, and the fo uh, season is uh, um, followed by low input sunflower that occupies spring until summer. Uh, the low input sunflower, what it does is uh, usually it's not uh, fertilized, uh, but it has a deep root that can use the nitrogen and the water that is um, uh, deep in the, in the soil. So, and so for the sunflower is very little um, cost, because you only practically the only cost is to, to the seed and put it into the uh, field and harvest, uh, but rotated with the wheat that uh, help also to control the weeds. So when you the following year you have wheat, it, it will be uh, more productive. So the, the sunflower has very little cost, but you have some grain. So, so it's positive. And considering the system, with some flower, it's even more than just having wheat after wheat. Uh, the, the, one of the problems of this system is that uh, before the sunflower, uh, after, after you harvest the wheat, you have the summer, then you have the rain, and then the, the risk of erosion is high uh, during the whole uh, autumn, winter, and spring until you, you have the sunflower into place. So you can see there's always positive and negative things in, in most of the systems. Now, second case is uh, in irrigated agriculture in the Sahel, uh, where uh, we have low and variable rainfall, like before, but this time it's during summer. Uh, there are traditional systems 
drain-fed systems. Mm, Okay, they, they, they depend on store water, and then they have irrigated systems that have been developed. So it's a very dry area uh, with uh, some rainfall, and, uh, but there is a possibility to irrigate. And uh, typically, we are talking about small farmers. Uh, they, they, the, 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 the risk of failure is high, so they diversify, diversify a lot uh, around their possibilities. So they have, for example, the pasture land where they have animals. It's very important for them, they, they having uh, animals in their diet. Then there's this uh, diary, uh, diary part that it's uh, the rain-fed system. So they, they, they have uh, some legumes or um, sorghum or millet that they so you see very separate because the rainfall is not too too high so they they always get some usually they get some biomass and maybe some grain then the um, there is rice this is uh, the development in the 80s where they they can uh, usually have half an hectare or a quarter of an hectare that they can produce rice it's all subsistence they use they will use it for uh, eating and they usually have small uh, area called wallow, that is the river that where they use the water to irrigate. The, there is a moment that the uh, eating, the level of the river increase because of the rain in the uh, up in the upper land where the rainfall is very high in the in Guinea. So when it arrives to this part of Mauritania or Senegal, the Irrigate uh, the, the level increase so much that irrigates part of it, the, what is called wallow. When the water recedes, they do they sow maize or sorghum uh, as soon as the water uh, goes. So they, they, this is they will this will grow with the water stored in the soil. Okay, and then just uh, usually also the women have tiny little plots where they have vegetables. So you can see. Uh, how here they they have um, different systems, different cropping, and and a family that diversifies that usually have a bit of everything. So so the risks are uh, diversified. Uh, the um, the rise the, the, the thing is that there are opportunities to improve. No. Uh, the this is the period that occupies by the rice when you have irrigation no? having water as i said this is very low rainfall having water really provides uh, 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 opportunities to 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 get um, more food let's say to assure the food but the, there are problems with the rice not all the soils are uh, uh, appropriate and uh, so you can have Sometimes that you do the transplanting one day and the following day there is no water standing anymore. No, and you know that usually you require water standing to control better the weeds and the production. I'm not going to lose uh, much time with it. This is just to say that depending on the soil, um, there are uh, these plots where you have. Um, it's not really well appropriate for the rice because it's. Bit sandy, you, 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 the the water does uh, the soil does not retain the water uh, as much as uh, with the clay soil, and uh, so the the yields are very low. It's complicated to to grow it here. So uh, there, but there are other alternatives that they could consider. Like uh, here, we propose uh, sorghum that you don't need the uh, as much as water, and your cycle is uh, shorter. So it's um, uh, you see, this, the cycle is much shorter, so you, you assure the water. See? Well, and sorghum and, and cowpea. Y tengo que poner fecha. Um, the... Um, this just to see how the, this work and um, trying to get uh, uh, sorghum if it works or not in the region. The, the thing is that uh, often 
when you have a system, it's not straightforward just to bring another crop. No, you really have to do research and work and see what are the uh, pros and cons, and 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 then the get the 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 best system. No, the, the the message I would like you to to have with you is that the cropping system is not looks like it's fixed, but it's not fixed. No, it's really because well, better it is alive. No, so even if it is widely adopted then usually i would say always there is room to uh, to improve it and to make it more sustainable and to facilitate its management so just because uh, it's uh, as i say widely adopted try to look at it with with new eyes try to see what what can be done to to improve it or to to make it better or just to to f to facilitate the life of the producers and i think think with that I've finished.